on July 14th in Germany. I have a doctorate degree from the University of Bonn in 1822, where I remained as a professor until 1833. And then I accepted the first chair of physiology at University of Berlin. This represented that physiology is actually a science. I believed in vitalism. What is this you say? It is the belief that life could not be explained by interactions of physical and chemical processes alone. That life was more than just physical processes meant that our life force, life force was beyond the scope of scientific analysis. I also believe that there was five different nerves and they were all sensory. Let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five. They were immediate and they could not be measured. Each one contained their own characteristic and each responded in certain ways when they were stimulated. This meant that the energy stimulated and then resulted in a sensation. An example could be seen with the eye. The eye is stimulated by light waves and pressure and it results in a visual sensation. This meant that the nerve, not the brain, causes sensation and put, the rest, put to rest the old emanation theory of perception that any sensory nerve can convey any sensory information to the brain. Nerves contain their own specific energy. They're not equally sensitive to the same type of stimulation. And this meant that specific irritability created inadequate stimulation. Correspondence between our sensation and objects in the physical world determined by the senses and their specific irritability. We are aware of sensory impulses, but we are not aware of the objects in our physical world. Knowledge is limited to the types of receptors that we possess. The nerve system is an in intermediary between our physical objects and consciousness. I stress the physiological mechanism. Sensory information is modified and what we experience is different from physical and present. Sensations do not exhaust mental life though because we have an active mind. I also wrote the Handbook of Human Physiology. It summarized what we knew about human physiology at the time. The first Institute of Experimental Physiology was also done by moi at the University of Berlin. Where, and I also was the first one to anticipate a close relationship between physiology and psychology. I believe that we must understand physiology before we can ever understand psychology. Well, here comes one of my students. Let me get out of here before he starts yelling at me about vitalism. Bye guys. Hello, my name is Herman von Helmholtz. Many consider me the greatest scientist of the 19th century because of my great contributions in physics, physiology, and psychology. I was born in Potsdam, Germany, and as a child, I was a mediocre student in school. But outside of school, I spent my time reading scientific books and geometrical principles. But because I was not wealthy, nor my father had money, I was not able to pursue a higher education. But thanks to the government, they assisted me in pursuing a higher education with an agreement to serve eight years in the army as a surgeon. So I decided to attend Berlin Royal Frederick Wilhelm Institution for surgery and medicine. And that is where I met Johannes Mueller. Although I agreed with most of Mueller's conclusions, we also disagreed greatly in vitalism and sensory nerves. What is vitalism? Well, like Mueller had explained earlier in the video, vitalism is a belief that life cannot be explained simply through physical and chemical processes. And the life force was beyond the scope of scientific analysis. However, I believe there was nothing mysterious in life and it could 
be explained through physics and chemical processes. I sided with materialist, while Mueller sided with vitalist. Can you believe that guy? We as materialists believe that the same laws apply to living and non-living things, as well as to mental and non-mental events. In all, us materialists believe that living organisms, including humans, are complex machines and all consist of material substances. As I continued with my studies, I disagreed with Mueller once again about the speed of nerve conduction. Mueller believed that nerve conduction is instantaneous, making it too fast to measure. His belief was due to the ancient belief that there is a non-material agent that makes instant, instantaneous and determines, determines behavior of living organisms. But because I am a materialist, I don't believe in the non-material agent. So I, did, so I decided to experiment on a frog where I, where I isolated the frog's nerves fiber in its leg, then stimulated in nervous in various distances and noted how long it took for the muscle to respond. After experimenting with the frog, I found that the muscular response reacted quicker when the motor nerves were stimulated closer to the muscle than further away. I then experimented with humans, asking the participants to push a button when they felt their leg being stimulated. After my research conductions, he was able to show, after my research conductions, I was able to show that nerve impulses can in fact be measured. But the reaction time was unreliable to be used as a valid measure, and therefore, I just abandoned it. One thing that I believe that Mueller was on the right path but needed to grow a little more knowledgeable was his doctrine of specific nerve, of nerve energies. I believe vision involves three separate receptors, each with its specific energy, not like Mueller claiming that the sense of vision had one specific energy associated with it. My three colored receptors were red, green, and blue violet. And any other, any other color shown in the eye that was not a primary color will be a various combination of the three receptors. With my contribution, I was able to help and expand forms of colored blindness. I also helped with Mueller's doctrine of specific nerve energies. The ear is not a single sense receptor, but a highly complex system consisted of multiple nerve fibers, each with its own specific energy. When I removed the basilar membrane and I uncoiled it, uncoiled it, it looked like a harp. Along the basilar membrane, there were short and long fibers, which vibrated in accordance to different frequencies, which is now known as Resonance place theory of auditory perception. Although I do not disagree with Mueller on the idea of an active mind, but again, I cannot accept something because simply it makes sense. Rather, I will try to empirically prove it's true. With my persistence on trying to prove its existence, I combine physics, chemistry, physiology, and psychology all together. With the, col with the collaboration of multiple fields, some say, I paved the way for experimental psychology. Now that I have made my points directly and clear to you, the audience, it is up to you to decide who makes more sense, me or Mueller. It better be me.